Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on the product rule for derivatives. So this is a really cool rule that we want to use when we have two functions that are being multiplied together. Now, as you can see, a lot of things happen in this rule, so you want to be able to keep all of the pieces straight. Well, let's get into the formula for this, as well as tips on how to use it. All right. So like I said, when you want to figure out the derivative of two functions multiplied together, here's how you do it. First, you take your first function and you multiply it by the derivative of the second function. Then you go ahead and you add the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. So note how the function remains unchanged in each of these terms, but also you multiply by each of their derivatives. And here's some good tips when you are using this product rule. First, make sure that you are only using this rule if you have two functions that are being multiplied. If they're being added, subtracted, uh, divided, or something different, then you would simply use a different rule, like maybe uh, the chain rule or something like that. Also, it's a good idea to take an extra step to go ahead and find the derivative of f and the derivative of g. That way, you're not trying to figure out derivatives and put these pieces in the, the, their proper spot at the same time. So, you know, just take a little bit of time, find those derivatives, help yourself out. Also note that the order of multiplication doesn't matter. That means sometimes you might see these two pieces flipped around in different textbooks, or maybe just when someone's actually going through the product rule. And that's okay. You know, if, if someone has f times g prime plus f prime times g, that's gonna work out too, all right? The important part is that you have each of their functions multiplied by the derivative of the other one. That's really what makes the product rule. All right, let's go ahead and get into my examples and see exactly how this thing works. So in this first one, I have that h of x equals to x squared multiplied by 3x squared plus 1. And just to help us out, I want to go ahead and highlight what our two functions are. So this part, I would consider my first function. Let's call that f. Then all of this is our second function. Let's go ahead and call that g. So we want to begin by finding the derivative of each of these pieces first. So let's go ahead and do the derivative of f. We can do that one simply by using our power rule, and we get 2x. All right, now let's move on and figure out what is the derivative of g. So this one, I'd take the derivative of this piece, so 6x. The derivative of 1 is 0, 0. All right, so now I have both of my derivatives. Oops. Now let's carefully write down where all of these pieces are going to go, okay? So we want to think of our first function, just as it is, unchanged, multiplied by the derivative of our second. Then we'll add that to our second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. Okay, so that's the formula we'll be plugging things into. So h prime of x, or the derivative of x, is equal to f, that's our x squared, multiplied by the derivative of g, there's our 6x. Plus, now we'll put g in, 3x squared plus 1, multiplied by the derivative of f, and of course we found it, 2x. Okay, now the formula by itself really just helps uh, to, to put all of the pieces in the right spot. You're not necessarily out of the woods, you usually do have to do some simplifying uh, once you've done these pieces here, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's already start combining things, seeing what this turns into. So x squared and another x, this would be 6x cubed. Uh, over here, we distribute our 2x in, so plus a 6x cubed plus a 2x. All right, looking good. So just one more simplifying step. Uh, let's say that the derivative of h is 12x cubed plus 2x. All right, and now this guy is done, okay? Let's try another example out uh, just to make sure that we know what we're doing. All right, in this one, we want to figure out what is the derivative of the square root of x multiplied by x cubed plus 2x squared. So again, let's go ahead and highlight the two functions that are being multiplied in here. So here's f, and we'd consider this other one. All of this would be g. All right, we need to figure out the derivative of each of these separately. 
So what is the derivative of, say, just our little f piece here? Well, if you want to think of this, it's like we need to take the derivative of, say, x to the 1 half. So really, I can use the power rule on this by bringing down the 1 half and getting x to the negative 1 half. Uh, of course, we can write this as 1 all over 2 times the square root of x. All right, so there is the derivative of f. Now let's spend a little bit of time finding the derivative of g. All right, so the derivative of x cubed, 3x squared. The derivative of 2x squared, plus 4x. All right, now we got both of those pieces. It's time to put it in our formula. Let's see if you can remember it, okay? So what pieces do we need in here? Well, we'll start by using our first function, f, just as it is. Square root of x. Then we'll multiply it by the derivative of the second function. Yep, that's all of this right here. 3x squared plus 4x. Okay, add. Now we'll take the second function just as it is. And we'd multiply by the derivative of the first. All right, and again, I'm just gonna highlight uh, the pieces so you can see where everything came from. So all of this was our original function. Then we followed that up, all of this stuff, with the derivative of g. Then we have g by itself. And we multiplied that by the derivative of f. Okay, now where you'd go from here is you'd probably want to distribute in your square root and distribute it in this guy and go ahead and simplify it as much as possible. Uh, I'm not going to simplify this one because I just want to show you where all of these pieces end up. Let's do one last example just to make sure that we have this down. In this last one, we want to figure out what is the derivative of 4 times e to the x multiplied by the square root of x. All right, so let's grab our two functions. Maybe 4 e to the x is our first function, and the square root of x, we will call that our second function. All right, finding their derivatives individually. So what is the derivative of f? Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the 4 is just a constant. So I know that the derivative of f is 4 e to the x. Nice. All right, what is the derivative of g? Well, you note that we've already done the square root of x. That was in our previous example. So I know that its derivative is 1 all, all over 2 times the square root of x. Okay, and now I have both of their derivatives. It's time to put things together. So what is h prime of x? Again, let's see if we can remember where all the pieces go. So start with your first function, just as it is. 4e to the x. Then multiply that by the derivative of the second. Looks good. Then write the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. All right, not bad. Again, let's highlight where, what all of these pieces are, where they came from. So all of this was our f. Let's see, then that was followed up by this function, which is our derivative of g. Then we had g multiplied by the derivative of f. So yep, yeah, looks like all of our pieces ended up in the right spot, and we'd simplify just a little bit to make it a little bit nicer. So 4 e the x all over 2 square root of x plus, uh, let's see, square root of x times 4 e to the x. And about the only thing that I can see that uh, we might simplify is maybe cancel out an extra 2 here. Then we'll call it good. So h prime of x is equal to 2 e to the x all over the square root of x plus the square root of x multiplied by 4 e to the x. And now we found our derivative using the product rule.
So this is a really handy thing. Remember only to use it on functions that are being multiplied. And of course, be very careful on where you put those pieces. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.